Warning, warning. Two idiots are inside my ball pit. What's going on here? <laughs> anyway, keep on listening, guys. Hi, welcome back to Discovering SCP. Um, we are back. It's episode like 156, 157, who even knows? 157, I know. I've been counting. Wow. And, track. and guess what? I got really lonely after Kinch left last week, so I went ahead and grabbed a new friend for us to hang out with. Is um, this the new guest era? Everybody, please clap and welcome Ori. Hey, what's up? That's right, Ori. I haven't talked to you in a very long time. I think we bonded over Demon Boys like a year or two ago and then never spoke to each other again. I mean, what is a friendship if not something you can rekindle once a year for personal needs, right? Exactly. exactly. And speaking of personal needs, I have a personal need to read some of your stuff. Because I keep seeing you around the community. I know, I think you manage that OOC SCP community Twitter, right? I do. I do. I am um, the only owner of the SCP OOC account on Twitter that comes active about once a month, posts 12 things, and then vanishes again for two months. Nice. That's just like Tanhoney writing SCPs, so that tracks. Yeah, I think that's <laughs> <laughs> the healthiest way to interact with this site. Exactly. exactly. I don't it's even, short of versus If the site shut down, I wouldn't even know. <laughs> But yes, um, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you came to the community and uh, what you've been doing lately? Sure, sure. So um, I am one of the site admins. That's a recent development as of like two months ago, I think. Um, I first got exposed to SCP when I was like, what was it, 11 or 12. Um, I had a DeviantArt account and I was obsessed with creepypastas because I was that kind of child. Right. Um, I saw fan art of SCP-173 and I'm like, wow, what is this creepypasta? I have never heard of it before. Um, searched it up. We were still in, I think we were still at like the tail end of series one or just started series two at the time. And I found all this other stuff and I'm like, what the hell is this? I have fallen into something. Um, and so I, you know, read all of that original stuff, was a fan of, um, 999 back in the day because, oh my God, cute, uh, innocent monster. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so different from all this other grimdark stuff that's here. Um, kind of fell out of the fandom for a while until about my freshman year of college back in 2016, where I rediscovered the site, um, and just kind of stayed a regular reader since. Um, I refused to join because I'm like, no, to join, you have to write something. Um, and then I finally joined a May two years ago because I'm like, I finally have an idea. <gasps> My first idea ever, probably be the only thing I ever post. And here I am approaching 30 pages and I definitely posted more than one thing. Nice. Look at 30 pages. It's just one story. Nice. So 2015 to 2023, that is a solid eight-year uh, thing. You're here. You're up here rivaling Tanhoney. Uh, Tanhoney, oh, how many uh, years are you at? Um, I think it's 20 else to 12 years. All right. Well, here's yeah, what's I... more, more what's more important than eight or 12 is how old are you right you now? See, he's or... changing what you said back there. <laughs> oh my god. How I'm 25, but I turn 26 at the end of next month. I'm uh, okay. 27, so... but I turn 28 in October. So, so you have eight eight uh, consecutive years, and then you were there for like a year before, right? So can we call that like nine? Sure. Yeah, we get the calculator out. Would you say that that's over a third of your life that you've been a part of this community? I could say that. I don't want to say that, but I could is, say is that. Is it true? <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Well, I'm happy to have you. I'm excited to read. I know you've got an article planned out for us that you have sufficiently hyped up pre-recording. I am ready to freaking check this shit out. Uh, do you have the link for us, Tanhoney? Absolutely, I do have it. It was given to me in the same chat, but I also have it, so I'll post it again. I didn't feel like scrolling up. Uh, oh, wow, it's right there. Okay, I already found it. Never mind. I also SCP have it with me, just in case. <gasps> oh, Fantastic. the picture! SCP-6033, the friend with many arms. That's what they call me. Nice. Ahem. <clears throat> we have got a, uh, as Donnell indicated, we've got a lovely picture here to begin with. Yeah, uh, Anomalous, can you put the photo up on screen for us? Did you actually draw this yourself, by the way, Ori? So all of the images that you see in this article, I did draw myself. Um, if anybody follows me on Twitter, you know that I am a decently active artist. Um, my usual style is not this. I would hope it doesn't look like this. <laughs> but um, I decided this article would be enhanced by some cutesy handmade images, and I think that that 
was successful. I, I love it Very personally. Nice. Like Tanoni, I think we should get Ori to start draw, help you draw some official Aetheral art. I feel like you guys <laughs> could really sync up styles. Um, no worries. Uh, we'll get into it. Yeah, for sure. 6033, level 2 restricted. Containment class, Safe. Disruption class, Dark. Risk class, Not Ice. Special Containment Procedures. SCP-6033 is currently cleared for nightly usage by Toby McHenderson between the hours of 19.00 and 21.00. Let, <laughs> I said it like that. let it be known, based on the caption, that Toby McHenderson is six years old. Okay. One Foundation agent will be posted in his bedroom while the SCP is in use. When not in use, the SCPs remain stored in Site-58's high-security item storage. Alright, so right now, based on the special containment procedures alone, I don't think I have enough to make an accurate prediction, but what my brain immediately turned to was like a Monsters, Inc. scenario, where they're just scaring Toby McEnderson for some sort of energy over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> so, But we will He's see like, <laughs> as we delve further in. Description. The SCP is a children's book titled The Friend with Many Arms, with no known author or publisher. The book is illustrated in a style similar to non-anomalous children's literature. I don't know, I can't read that, what's it say? Uh, it says, while testing is revealed that the book's images are illustrated via non-anomalous means, they appear to be animate, as the entity depicted in the story constantly changes shape and size on each page while under observation. And written in a style of books aimed at children aged three to five years old. Well, so this is already past Toby McEnderson's era. Yeah, aren't you a little old for this kind of book, Toby? Grow up, Toby! <laughs> Fucking knock it on the ground. <laughs> oh my god, we like bullies. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm the foundation designated bully. That's the guy posted in his room. <laughs> Six year old bullies being like, Are you a little too old for this? <laughs> the story contents of the book contain a mild cognito hazard that results in migraines upon initial reading, but otherwise harmless. The book depicts a story of a formless entity named Uritla as they wander the cosmos searching for a friend. Aww. The SCP's anomalous abilities manifest when the story is read by Toby McHenderson. When he opens the book, a large formless entity... Uh, size is highly variable and constantly changing. On average, SCP-6033-1 is somewhere between 4 to 6 meters tall and 7 to 10 meters long. Identical to the one depicted in the book... Known as SCP-6033-1... ...will manifest within 10 meters of him. Dash 1 will then proceed to engage McKenzie in friendly conversation, typically finishing its interactions with him by reading him to sleep. That one will de-manifest once Mick Henderson has fallen asleep. Aww, this is nice. I like this guy. He's a so friend far. with many arms. I love Udi La. Me plus Udi La. Dash Wonder displays a range of anomalous abilities involving shapeshifting, teleportation, and telekinesis. Viewing Dash One directly also results in a mild cognitive hazardous effect, causing migraines in the viewer similar to those caused by the SCP itself. Both the SCP and Dash One's cognitive hazardous effects rapidly diminish with regular exposure. Interesting. Interesting. Addendum 1, Discovery. We've got another nice image. Oh, I like this one. He's got a big egg on his head. <laughs> Me when I come one back from head. the chicken coop in uh, Stardew Valley. Look at Hell him, yeah. though. He's, this time he's flat. He's like uh, he's horizontal instead of vertical, is what I mean. That's cute. SCP-6033 was discovered in the possession of then four-year-old Toby McKenderson. McKenderson had been reported to local police by his grandmother. As missing. I don't know why I have to put that pause in there. <laughs> as missing, quotation marks. <laughs> <Armed robbery. laughs> Foundation agent Basil Sias. Uh, agent Sias was assigned to this mission due to previous history of success regarding anomalies involving children and families. Became involved. A report of McKenderson being sighted alongside a massive unidentified entity came to the Foundation's attention. Due to initial reports from those having seen the entity claiming that it was difficult to perceive and visual contact resulted in migraines, Agent Sias was deployed with an anti cognitive hazardous gear. I imagine he was being like sunglasses. Hell yeah. <laughs> the entity was not present upon initial contact, and McKenderson and the SCP were retrieved without incident. The local population was excessively anesthetized and made no reports of lasting mental, emotional, or psychological damage. Due to initial assumptions that McEnderson had anomalous capabilities, they originally given the classification of SCP-6033 and placed under strict containment procedures. Due to rapidly declining mental health and a lack of Dash-1 manifestations, McEnderson's containment procedures were resumed, re re reviewed and the anomalous capability of the SCP were discerned. McEnderson was transferred to a low-risk humanoid containment cell and permitted nightly access to the SCP. 
right, it looks like we've got an interview with the man, the myth, the legend, Toby McEnderson. Yeah. You're um, the voice, right? I'm recording. I'm No, I'm recruiting, not recording. I, of course I'm recording. Yeah, I hope you fucking record it. I'm recruiting Ori. Ori, who do you want to voice? I'll go ahead and take size. Perfect. All right, Tan, do you feel like you're particularly childlike today? <laughs> I guess. I've, I've got an inner child I can bring out. <laughs> do you? I'm interested Let us see to see the that. child. Bring us the child. Hello. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to see the child anymore. All right. <laughs> uh, I'll do the little narration bits here real quick then. Okay. <clears throat> Interview. I guess you are going to see the child. Toby McEnderson. Interviewer, Agent Basil Sias. Agent Sias was chosen due to involvement in 6033's recovery, but also due to his experience as a member of the Foundation Department of Anomalous Ambassadors. Forward. The following interview was conducted at the request Backward. of... <laughs> now, I can't read backwards. Uh, <laughs> okay, never mind. It's not happening. I'm sorry, Tan. I didn't acquire that skill yet. You failed me. I'm so sorry. I'm so fucking sorry. The following interview was conducted at the request of the Department of Sciences as part of a review of Toby McEnderson's containment procedures. As Agent Sias had conducted the past four interviews with Toby and established a positive rapport with the child, he was assigned to conduct the interview on the D Department of Sciences' behalf. Begin log. Hey there, Toby. How are you doing tonight, buddy? I'm okay, Mr. Sias. You don't look okay. You look kind of sad to me. Is something wrong? <clears throat> McCunderson looks down towards his lap and fiddles with his hands. You can tell me anything, bud. You won't be in trouble. I promise. You know what? We can pinky promise on it. I just have to stop real quick to say I love like the camp counselor vibe you've got right now. Fits perfectly. <laughs> he pulls the chair like turns it backwards for a second. <laughs> <laughs> pulls out the blanket for it. Agent Sias holds out his little finger to McEnderson. Toby seems hesitant at first, but then hooks his own finger with Agent Sias. The two shake, and McEnderson appears to relax somewhat. Um, I'm a little sad. Why's that? Did something happen? McEnderson shakes his head. I haven't been able to see my friend. Really now? Who's your friend? Udi La. And what did Udi La look like? We might be able to find them and let them come visit. Udi La is big and squishy. It hurts a little to look at them sometimes, but they're not scary. They have lots of arms and they're very <laughs> nice. We can't find them though. They live in my book and someone took my book away from me. He's, he's got a slight New York accent that's developed. <laughs> I'm trying to walk here, but without Odila. <laughs> Why in the walk here? Watch where you're going, motherfucker! <laughs> McEnderson sniffles. Pizza from they 34th do. Street, best you ever had. <laughs> they do? Now you're just being silly. People can't live in books. McEnderson sniffles. <laughs> oh, okay. You got this. Yes, they can. Udi La lives in my book. They come out and talk to me and read me stories at night. Do they now? What kind of things do you two talk about? Um, It's come to my attention that McEnderson is the same voice as Joe, but slightly higher pitched. <laughs> which is amazing. Look, I've got one voice and it's New York accent. <laughs> it's so good. McEnderson tenses up again and begins fiddling with his hands once again. It's okay, Toby. We pinky promised, remember? You can tell me anything. We talk about my mommy and daddy. They're with the universe now. With the universe now? That's what Udi La said. They said they spoke to mommy and daddy, and that's what they said. Udi La sounds very nice. Can I meet them? Yeah, you just gotta open the book and we can meet them. End log. Following this interview, Agent Sias and Toby McEnderson opened the SCP, resulting in a Dash 1 manifestation. Despite initial concerns, Dash 1 was cordial and polite with Foundation personnel. Following a discussion between personnel science to the SCP, Dash 1, and DOS, the SCP's new container procedures were agreed upon. <clears throat> You've got a picture here. Yeah. Indeed. Uh, this one looks like a cute little drawing of our friend Udila holding up a book and reading a story to Toby while a bunch of people watch from a window. Mm, interesting. <laughs> mm. Go ahead. Uh, addendum. We're good reading the story. <laughs> Just like critiquing his narration. It's like, I don't like the way he keeps stuttering at this part. <laughs> addendum 6. Sir, duration levels are approaching 50%. <laughs> we must terminate now. It's pronounced archipelago. Udila. Addendum 6033.3. Observation log. Uh, the subjects are SCP-6033-1 and Toby McEnderson. Date, uh, January 13th, 2021. 
Following revised containment procedures, Toby McEnderson was given a standard humanoid containment chamber, furnished to resemble a child's bedroom. McEnderson was given permission to request any alterations within reason. I want an Xbox. No. <laughs> <laughs> this is a PlayStation site. <laughs> you'll, you'll play Sonic and you'll like it. The room was equipped to allow Foundation personnel to continue monitoring McEnderson and Dash 1 as needed. The following is an observation log recording an interaction between Dash 1 and McEnderson approximately two weeks following these changes. Begin log. <clears throat> Agent Sias arrives at McEnderson's bedroom with the SCP. McEnderson looks up from blocks he had been playing with and runs over to Agent Sias. He takes the book and opens it, with Dash 1 manifesting as expected. The entity glances towards Agent Sias and towards the observation window. So who's going to be um, the Dash 1? Uh, do you want to take this one as well, Ori, or would you prefer I take over for you? Uh, you go ahead and take this one. All right. Ori la. <clears throat> McEnderson attempts to hug the S, uh, the Dash One, and then proceeds to bring various toys over to the entity. What do you want to play tonight? We can play um Pokemon, Ooh, or maybe Spider Man. Actually, Toby, how about we just read a story tonight? You know that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sleepy yet. I know. I know. Promise I'll make it extra special, okay? I finished writing that special story for you. Go get ready for bed. We can get started. McEnderson perks up and runs off to their privacy area. Dash 1 undulates towards the bed, several eyes fixed on the observation window. McEnderson returns a few minutes later and climbs into the bed. Did you brush your teeth and wash your face? Uh-huh. Good! Now then, let's get started. Mmm! <laughs> Dash one extends a tentacle towards the bedside table and picks up. Only what can take with you? And picks up the S picks up six zero three three. It opens the book and begins reading. It waves various tentacles over the book's pages. As it does, the various glow in the dark sti star stickers affixed to the bedroom ceiling descend and float in the air around the bed. Excuse me. <clears throat> Once upon an eternity, there was a lonely cognito hazard redacted. The word spoken here by Dash One contains mild cognito hazardous properties that resulted in Yeah, evidence. yeah, in English, Poindexter. Uh Toby McEnderson is yet to react negatively <laughs> to this and any observations. Named Udila. An image of the entity from the SCP constructed from dust floats from the page and hovers in the center of the room. The room goes dark with only this figure, Dash One, and McEnderson remaining visible. Okay, I'm starting to lose my places. Dash One, the book, and the SCP, the entity. No, the SCP is the book, and Dash One is the entity. Okay, now I now I understand. They look lonely. That's right, Toby. They were very lonely. They were born a very, very long time ago, before even the oldest star. Uh, SCP-1 waves its tentacles through the plastic star stickers. Several of them begin to glow and gather together over the figure, forming a single large star. The figure looks up towards the star. Will you be my friend? Udila asked the star. I cannot! The star Hold on, do a voice. Do a voice for the star. <laughs> Will you be do my friend? Do a voice friend? of Udila doing a voice for Udila the star. Udila asked the star. I cannot! Okay, hold on. There's a lot of layers to this. Mm. I cannot! The star replied, for I might accidentally burn you up. Udila was sad, but they understood. Maybe I'll never find a friend, they thought. The figure appears to fall over and begins to cry. Meanwhile, the star above grows larger before collapsing in on itself, forming a massive ball of darkness and the stars projected around the room. The figure appears startled and looks up at the new formation. Who are you? Udila asked. Will you be my friend? I cannot, the black hole replied, for I might accidentally eat you up. Udila was sad once again. The figure collapses over once more. Dash one begins moving its tentacles in circular motions, and the stars in the room begin to move. The room is slowly filled with what appear to be various nebula and other cosmic bodies, created by arts and craft supplies from McAnderson's bedroom. Several stars blink in and out over the course of several minutes, until a blue marble appears. The figure lifts an approximation of a head and undulates towards the marble. Eventually, Udila came across a little blue planet. 
Several crude representations of smiling human faces manifest across the Dash One's body. I think I may have taken on more than I could bargain for. <clears throat> well, I made. Mean, you, you, you reap what you sow. I do reap what I sow. Rudila was surprised. They had never seen something like this before. It wasn't large like a star, and it wasn't hungry like a black hole. Who are you? They asked. Will you be my friend? The planet, however, didn't respond to them. A framed photograph of Mr. and Mrs. McEnderson floats over towards the figure. Several stars attach themselves to the frame. The universe itself saw Udi Lado and responded. The figure looks towards the photo. The universe said, What is wrong, Udi La? I have no one to call my friend, Udi La responded. The universe looked at Udi La with pity. Several more stars wrap themselves around the figure. No one deserves to be alone, the universe said, embracing Udila. Down there is a planet called Earth, and on that planet is a little boy that is very dear to us. He's very lonely, just like you, and he needs a friend as well. Find him, and take care of him for us. McEnderson appears to have fallen asleep. Dash One produces several tentacles and carefully tucks him in. Udila knew what to do. He began working on a special book and sent it down to Earth where Toby would find it. As long as Toby had that book, the two would always be together. They quickly became the best of friends and were never lonely again. The universe itself had brought them together. Several of the SCP of the Dash One's eyes fixate on the observation window. They're in a special place right now. It can be a little cold sometimes, and even a little scary. But there's lots of people there that will take care of them both and keep them safe. This is the part he says while he's looking directly at the window, <laughs> sweating. <laughs> no matter what, Udila and Toby will always have each other. And maybe, even someday, they'll be able to see the world together. Together, they'll live happily ever after. Dash One closes the book and places it on McEnderson's bedside table. A mouth appears on Dash One's body and gives McEnderson a kiss on the forehead. Dash One glances towards the observation window once again before demanifesting. Request to grant Toby McEnderson permanent access to 6033 is pending approval. Nice. Aw, that was cute. I can see now why you brought up the 999 earlier on, since I can definitely feel a little bit of inspo from that. I thought this was really cute. I like that, like you mentioned before, it didn't go on too long. Uh, uh, and it delivered solidly on its premise. I thought it was fun, endearing. Uh, I'll definitely give this one, I'm going to go with 9.5 out of 10. Sure, sure. Uh, what do you think, Tan? Uh, I would agree with you, though. Yeah, it's, it's very wholesome, a chunk of 500. Um, <laughs> but um, I know, I, 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 when this came out, I do remember there was a bit of a disagreement in the comments about whether it's too wholesome. Oh my um, god. So there were a yeah. couple of disagreements in the comments when this one first came out. I'm um, sure there are, they, there were. I bet there were people who were like, only 999 can do this because it already did it. Well, the big disagreement at first was my decision to use personal pronouns for Toby uh -huh. and not make him like a Dash 2 instance. Um, and this was still in the days where um, my experience on the site was kind of limited still. I hadn't really established what my style was yet so mm -hmm. i didn't have necessarily that to fall back on um and so people are like well you're kind of going against the standard you're you you really should refer to personal pronouns i'm like i this is a child yeah and like being <laughs> this is a child and the child itself himself is not anomalous i don't feel right referring to an actual child as it throughout the article and like a number and that kind of formed the foundation for my vision with, you know, Site 58 and my works as a whole. I'll be honest, because I noticed that, and I, I had assumed you did it uh, as, like, a uh, intentional style choice, because I much prefer it. This is something mm -hmm. I've talked about a bunch of times on the podcast, but I honestly think the amount of times that, like, people are abstracted to numbers, I get they want the foundation to be, like, cold, efficient, logical, whatever, but sometimes it gets ridiculous, right? Like, if you read legal documents, like, which is about as, uh, what's the word on the clinical tone as it gets, all the time they'll say, like, party here to referred after as X, 
And like, especially like you said, when you're referring to a child that has no anomalous properties, I don't see any reason for them to label it Dash 2 just because they captured it and thought he was the SCP at first. Like, it seems ridiculous and arbitrary. And it makes sense to me that they would actually use, like, refer to him by, like, personal pronouns and, like, call him by his name. I like that. I think that's how more SCPs should be. So I give you points for that. And a, and a lot of that kind of wound up being the foundation for the vision for this particular site, which is still very much in development, but I kind of visualized it as this place where, you know, we're working to make sure that these anomalous entities that are sapient, you know, capable of human level thought and emotion and aren't like ready and trying to kill us all the time are treated more humanely and more actively like people. I think that there's a lot of potential for stories about that kind of approach on the site, and it hasn't really been explored as thoroughly as I think it could be. Mm -hmm. So is Site 58, is that sort of like the running theme is like a softer view of the foundation or like softer articles, or is it more like a site that's a little bit more personal, more human? I, I see it as... And it's like I said, it's still very much a developing vision. I am trying to embrace it as the the contrast between a foundation who is trying to do what they think is the quote unquote right thing against their standard modus operandi being, you know, that cold approach. I want there to be this almost tonal dissonance between the foundation as an entity that's still kind of cold and very methodical um, mm. and doesn't always do the right thing versus the people who work for it that very much want to do the right thing and are trying to do it within the confines of the system that they're stuck in. And I think you portrayed that really well, particularly with like, you don't harp on it too much. You let the reader infer, but like how in the drawing we can see Udi La reading to Toby, but you can see the little observation window with people taking notes at the top and like how it mentions him looking over after he finishes the story. I think that's like just enough to get that concept across. Like you really give your words a mission with that, where you uh, trust the reader to have the intelligence to put two and two together rather than seeing it as completely one way or the other. Exactly. And that's part of why um, I initially did not have that second image in there like that, or I guess really? the third. The third oh, yeah, technically the third. My apology. That. Yeah. I meant the second little like child drawing. Sorry. Right, right. Um, but my original draft didn't have that one. And not only did it feel like there was something missing from that section, um, I wanted, after I read through my draft for like the third or fourth time, I was like, I want an image of the reading to happen but there needs to be more than just Uditla reading to the child. There needs to be something there that kind of reminds people that this is a foundation story. Mm -hmm. This is a group that wants to do the right thing, but it's kind of constantly at war with itself to do, you know, what is within its traditional operations. Mm -hmm. And how does that manifest here? Well, it manifests with a child that is, yes, in a bedroom of its own design, but also being constantly monitored by these scientific personnel who want to understand, study, contain it, whatever you want to call it. And there's also still the fact that no matter how nicely they treat him and give him like, oh, you can design your own bedroom, he, they still basically kidnapped a child. Oh, and yeah, 100 percent. Like the article barely touches on that. We mentioned grandma in passing. Mm -hmm. And I'm kind of surprised that more people haven't realized, holy shit, they actually just legitimately stole a child and made everybody forget the child existed. Which is so fucked up because like all this uh, – and, and he mentions that too when he's reading. He's like, hopefully one day we can travel the world. It's like probably they won't let that ever happen and it's fucked. It's really sad because like not every anomaly is evil and um, and they just like, you know, it doesn't matter. Contain it anyway. And like it, I also think this displays a thing I talk about with the foundation, how the more it's expound, expanded upon, the more it's like central conceit of like humanity can't handle anomalies. The world would fall apart if they knew falls apart because we have a six year old who is not only befriended an anomaly, but relies on it to like keep his mental health stable after the foundations fucking put him in a cell essentially. And it really kind of gets that sort of, uh, it, it, it's like, what is even the purpose of this all? Like, why do they have to contain them? Uh, in the whole back of your mind, even though otherwise the story is, you know, at, at face value, pretty wholesome, and you get to see these sweet uh, interactions between the two of them. Right. I would say, you know, the longer that this wiki has existed and the longer that it continues to exist, the more you're going to see stories kind of like this, you know, a, a vision of, and I think that's part of why articles like 6,500 are so popular is because it's grappling with that fact that the the more we put on this site, the more that exists, 
the more it becomes difficult to justify the foundation, at least as it was existing, mm -hmm. because, you know, the more stories that we write and the more we push people to challenge themselves and do new things, the more we come up with things and ideas that in scope, style, substance, don't work with that old vision of, well, this is contained for a reason. Like 682 is contained for a reason. We're keeping humanity safe from big, scary, killer monster reptile. Right. But 999, well, why is that contained? It's just a blob of jello that's very friendly and makes you happy. Um, and we kind of try to, we have to kind of face ourselves with that thesis and go, wow, maybe the serpent's hand was right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And it almost makes me wonder, because you know you have all these different canons, like you have Broken Mask Grade, you have different GOIs. I wonder if there isn't room for something. Maybe, I don't know if this is your vision with Site 58 or just a canon in general, where we see an almost revamped foundation, like after the old guard 05s are out. And, you know, there's been so many anomalies and so many of these interactions where we see a different approach, where it's more like study, uh, exam, and see how things work instead of just immediately going to cage this thing up inside. Um, cause I could almost see like a, a men in black scenario where you've got like fucking anomalies walking down the halls with the researchers. Yeah. So 58 for me is a setting more so than it is a canon. I have like vaguely canon slash series ideas for it that I mm -hmm. have been working off of one that's connected to 7,999 and then one that is kind of something else in its own little vein that does play a little bit with that idea of, oh, they walk among us in the real world. <laughs> Impossible to us. Um, but um, I treat 58 itself more as a setting as opposed to a canon so that people can, if they're interested, kind of hop in and take on that idea and approach without necessarily feeling like, well, there's all of this established lore and history, and if I don't adhere to it, then I can't write for this. We're not 120 here. If you just want to write a silly little guy that the foundation is nice to, 58 is the place to put your silly little guy. Nice. And, you know, that's perfectly reasonable. So... Now that we've explored that, we still have about half a podcast time slot to fill. Uh, Tan, I believe you had some backup articles? I do indeed. I've got one right here. Uh, nice. I, I was sitting up as I said that. I wasn't like, angry. I'm ready to read another certified Ori Classic TM. Fire this emoji. one is another certified Ori Classic. This is, have you ever had an enlightened experience oh in a ball pit? Mm. <laughs> is, oh does this God. have anything to do with the Dash Con ball pit? Uh, no, but I, I may have a picture to show you in a bit. <laughs> interesting. <laughs> what do you mean about this? Hmm. But, uh, anyway, I see no reason to delay. Shall we get right into it? Uh, oh, I, I, sorry, I was just scrolling really fast, not, like, reading ahead, and I saw another, like, little sketch, and it made me happy. <clears throat> yeah, so first thing to notice before you start reading, Tan, is we have another picture. This one is like an actual photograph of a ball pit that says, The pit containing 6059. Entity was on a pause when photo was taken. I'm on break. Oh. I can't anomalize all day. <laughs> Anomalous, please put the photo on screen for us. Thank you very much. Anomalous, please enhance. <laughs> enhance! Enhance! Uh, SCP-6059, right. level 2 restricted. Containment class, Uselid. Disruption class, Vlam. Risk class, Not Ice. Special containment procedures. The Chuck E. Cheese establishment, formerly housing the SCP, has been seized by Foundation personnel under the cover of a major health code violation. They didn't even have to fake anything. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have Chuck E. Cheese in uh, the UK. We, we're, we're still like a real country. What is it like? Have you ever been? It's so... I was... I went there when I was a kid. You whizzed in the bullpen? No. Um, and I thought it was pretty cool, but also as a kid, I didn't really pay attention to cleanliness. I remember the main thing I did Chuck E. Cheese that everyone did from based on my friends encounters was there was this Jurassic Park game back in like the early 2000s and the 90s where you'd climb in and it was like a two player game and you had like this big seat and it was like you pointed these plastic guns at the screen and shot them. Uh, I think I... I, I haven't gone to a Chuck E. Cheese obviously since an adult, but I think like a relative posted photos when like my niece or someone related to me went there. Maybe it was a cousin. And I, I noticed they did not have the Jurassic Park game anymore. So mm. I'd say it's gone all downhill since then. They're downhill. Uh, uh, you can play video games anyway, to be honest. And what I want to know is, did you meet him? Chucky? Charles, yeah. I, I don't think... I only went a handful of times as a kid. I don't think I ever met any suit actors or, like, animatronics or anything. But I, I'm Might pretty well sure they exist. Might the arcade. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> the former structure had been converted to a foundation site. 
if you haven't met Charles, what's the point? Uh, my, the Chug and Cheese experience for me was like, go to the counter, get tokens, go to the Jurassic Park machine. That was it. All civilians recorded as having formally interacted with SCP-6059 have been properly anesthetized. All journal exposed to the SCP has been monitored for future unusual behavior, including, but not limited to, religious fanaticism, unusual ritualistic behavior, involvement in fringe religions. Did any of this happen to you after your address at Parfink? So I know fringe religions probably in, means, like, you know, outside the scope of, like, societal norms, but I like to imagine it's a religion based around fringe, like the clothing, like that shit <laughs> cowboys have. I don't know. Uh, as for me, no, I did not uh, experience any of these, so I think I'm good to go. The SCP is to be fed Chuck E. Cheese brand pizza twice daily. They're torturing the poor thing. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I don't remember how it tastes. I was like six. It's well, bad. I'm gonna be it's That's bad. Guess. They're torturing it's the bad. thing. It's bad. It's cardboard pizza. That's what people tell me about Little Caesars, though, and I still think Little Caesars. Ah, uh, here we good. go. Any complaints from the SCP regarding the quality of pizza provided are to be disregarded? That's fucked up. Once a month, the SCP's pit should be emptied and refilled with plastic balls of the same brand used by standard Chuck E. Cheese establishments. SCP-6059 is permitted to have enrichment activities as a reward for good behaviour. As a little treat. So, Description. that Ooh, already tells me the pit itself is probably the SCP, not the balls, but it does something with balls. <laughs> it <doesn't know. laughs> he said balls. We are all 12 years old on this podcast. <laughs> Description. The SCP is an amorphous creature approximately the size of an average human toddler, composed of a mixture of plastic, vomit, pizza sauce, and trace amounts of feces and urine. I no longer want to read this article. That's really gross. <laughs> That's unnecessary. Well, enough, hey. <laughs> they make you eat the pizza. I mean, it hasn't been for enough. Oh, God. All right. Let's keep going. While I'm off it, it's capable of shaping a crude head and mouth. Two plastic balls placed atop its head were drawn on pupils serve as its eyes. It is unclear if these eyes are functional. The SCP lives in a ball pit formerly located in a Chuck E. Cheese establishment. The SCP is capable of leaving the confines of its ball pit despite constant statements to the contrary. Children under the age of 10 exposed to the SCP will begin to worship the entity after approximately 20 minutes of exposure. Worship typically takes the form of prostrating in a ring around the pit containing the SCP, reciting grandiose statements of the SCP's supposed might and power, and throwing slices of Chuck E. Cheese pizza into the pit. That's so gross. Addendum 1. Interviews with the SCP. Can I be the SCP, please? Please, gosh. Sure. Do you want to be the doctor, or? Sure, I'll take Rosemary. Perfect. <clears throat> Uh, interviewer, Dr. Zacharias Rosemary, a uh, foot researcher from the... Who's department... been interviewed? You didn't tell me. Sorry, 60459. Uh, researcher from the Department of Anomalous Ambassadors, a foundation branch... Oops, I accidentally hovered away from it. Uh, dedicated to improving communications between personnel and anomalies. You mentioned this in the last one as well. Is this, is this something that you came up with, or is this like something that... Um... So this, this is around. my creation, yeah. The amb Anomalous Ambassadors are to talk more about that vision that we were talking about just a few minutes ago. Nice. Nice. So they're like people specialized in like not treating anomalies like shit. Like they the are HR the department. Communicators. Right. They're, they are the communicators who are there that you send in because something is not necessarily super hostile and you think that you can probably get through with it to uh, get through to it with words. Nice. The following interview was conducted following the successful containment of 6059. Begin lock. Dr. Rosemary unzips the mesh netting surrounding 6059's pit. Following instructions from on-site command, he carefully steps in. The balls reach his knees. Hello, anyone here? 6059 pops up from the ball several meters from Dr. Rosemary. Hey! Yeah, hey, I'm... Are you balls? <laughs> what? Think in my pit. Are you balls? No, I'm a human being. Get out, get out, get out, leave, 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 get out, leave! 6059 continues shouting as it begins throwing plastic balls at Dr. Rosemary. Dr. Rosemary attempts to engage conversation, but is unsuccessful. 6059's assault continues until Dr. Rosemary leaves the pit. 6059 looks towards the exit of the pit and appears to form the approximation of a frown before vanishing back beneath the balls. End log. <clears throat> Several other members of side personnel attempt to engage 6059 in conversation following Dr. Rosemary's attempt. 6059 responded the same way to each. Dr. Rosemary was reassigned once it was determined the entity's reaction was not unique to him, and a new plan for interviewing was drafted. 
This plan included the creation of a pause system designed to punish the entity for poor behavior. <clears throat> How now, do they pause that? I'm excited in, to know. Interview 2, 10 29 uh, Dr. Rosemary was provided with a family-sized Chuck E. Cheese pizza to provide as an offering to 605. I assume he's wearing a hazmat suit. This practice... <laughs> This practice was developed after watching security footage involving 6059 before containment. Children were frequently seen throwing entire pizzas into the pit that held the entity. Get along. Dr. Rosemary approaches the pit with the pizza. He opens the mesh netting and holds the box over the pit. 6059 erupts from the balls beneath the pit. Pizza bites down and drags the offering into the pit. Feeling okay, SCP-6059? More willing to chat now? You have pleased me with a sacrifice, Moveskin. No, you may speak, non-ball. Right. Okay. Um, let's just start with the basics. What are you? Tell me, mortal. Have you ever had an enlightened experience in a bit? I am... What? Have you ever had an enlightened experience in a pit? Hold on, hold on. I have no clue what you're trying to ask me here. Have you ever been blessed by the pit of balls? Left with a mark of the divine? Touched by a higher power. I... Yes? When I was a kid, I got pink eye from McDonald's ball pit. Do you mean something like that? Yes, this is it. You've been touched by my blessing. You are a prophet of the pit. All right. That's lovely, SCP-6059. That didn't answer my question, though. Oh. Didn't it? No, it didn't. 6059 is silent for several moments. It suddenly begins shouting and throwing balls at Dr. Rosemary and continues until Dr. Rosemary leaves the pit. SCP-6059, if you do not behave, you're going to get a timeout. 6059 throws another ball at Dr. Rosemary, hitting him between the eyes. All right, timeout it is. Wait, wait! Dr. Rosemary institutes the recently developed pause plan, turning off the lights and leaving the room. SCP-6059 angrily throws a ball at the mesh netting of the pit every few minutes. Eventually, it appears to settle down and begin looking for personnel. Turn the lights back on, mortal. Release me from this timeout immediately. 6059 sinks into the pit, staring at the netting. It makes soft, whining noises. Please come back. And lock. Dr. Rosemary returned after 30 minutes. He explained behavioral expectations to 6059 and informed the entity that a failure to cooperate and behave would result in another pause. The entity agreed to the terms set forth. So, if, if, going in with what I just said, I have to set, step up for just a second to let my dog outside if you play with me. Nice. <laughs> this is my favorite part of the podcast, where I get to awkwardly sit with our lovely guest and try and fill the space while Dan does an IRL task. <laughs> Uh, so how are you feeling today, Ori? I'm good. Um, we are getting a ton of rain here, which means we are successfully trapped in, in the apartment, but that is all good. The dog is behaving himself more than expected. I expected him to knock more on this door and fuss, but he's been very quiet. Um, that's good to hear. Do you have any plans for Memorial Day? Well, assuming that the rain holds off, which it won't, um, I was going to take my dog to the park, but... The rain will not be holding off. <laughs> I'm sorry to so, hear about um, the rain. It's all good. I actually, you know, there's a fun fact about 6033 that I meant to mention earlier that I just completely forgot about. Mm -hmm. So um, Toby's name actually comes from my dog. I was struggling to come up with a, a, a name that fit the child. And my dog decided that he was going to make himself known during the draft by jumping up on me and about nearly knocking my computer onto the floor. I'm like, oh yeah, no, that works. I'll just name the child after you if you get off and go away. <laughs> Aw. Little Toby. Do you have any pictures of little Toby? Uh, I, I do. I guess I can probably share one later once we're done with this. But uh, yes, I do have plenty, plenty of pictures of him. Perfect. I'd love to see. Uh, have you seen the little bits Tan does with his dog on Twitter before? You know, I follow his Twitter, but all I ever see is the unhinged stuff. I don't think I've ever actually seen a picture of his dog. Well, every time he posts it, there's like a running lore gag that his dog used to be human. And he, <laughs> he started with a photo of his dog. It's like, I used to be Hello, human, you know. And then he just keeps adding stuff on. Like, he's like, like, what's an example of one of your Rocky tweets, Tan, aside from the original? Uh, I don't know. 
<laughs> uh, never mind. But he just like keeps adding on to that concept. It is very amusing. Uh, also, there's a, a Twitter account that does something similar. I think it's called like Not Dog or something. Very funny. Uh, but we're not here about dogs. We're here to resume now that Tan has returned. How's Rocky doing, Tan? He's doing fine. Good. Uh, <clears throat> interview 3, 10, 31, 2021. <clears throat> Begin log. Dr. Rosemary throws another family-sized Chuck E. Cheese pizza into 6059's pit. All right, 6059, are we ready to behave? 6059 pops up from the pit, eating the pizza. Nods. Good. We both got off on the wrong foot, so let's start over. I'm going to ask you a few questions, and I need you to answer honestly. All right? Those terms are acceptable, mortal. All right. First question, same as before. What are you? I am Botulite, god of the pit. God of the pit? Yes, I hold divine power over the pit and all within. All right, I can accept that. Now, when you say the pit, you mean... The pit and its many balls are my domain. I oversee them and their blessings. So, is it just this pit or all of them? I haven't seen you make much of an attempt to leave here. I am more than capable of leaving my pit. I am more powerful. Okay. Leave the pit, then. Uh, 6059 stares at Dr. Rosemary. It begins reaching to grab a ball. Make smart choices, 6059. Puts the ball down. My domain is the pit. This pit. I appreciate you being honest with me. And that's nothing to be ashamed of. You have more of a domain than most people. I've got to ask, though, why this pit? This is my pit. It is my domain. SCP-6059, please respond to the question. You know I want more of an answer than that. <laughs> the SCP goes silent and appears to recoil slightly. It's okay, SCP-6059. There's nothing to be upset about. You can talk to me. I woke up here. And? That is all. I woke up here. 6059 appears to breathe slightly faster. This is the most realistic depiction <laughs> <ever>. <laughs> White people when there's a realistic depiction of a panic attack. So this is your divine pit, then. Okay, I understand. And that thing with those children. My divine servants. Loyal subjects who sung my praises and brought me offerings. 1659, you had like 20 children worshipping you. What were you even doing? A god is nothing without followers. Followers spread word of your power and gain you influence. With followers, worshippers, you are remembered as mighty in the pantheon. With worshippers, you gain offerings and you live forever. Why children? They are like me. I feel kinship to them. 6059 watches as Dr. Rosemary records notes. It cocks its head slightly. Mortal, are you a children? No, sweetie, I'm in my 30s. Then why do you bring me offerings? Why do you write down the stories of my exploits? I do not feel my influence working upon you, yet you perform the steps of worship regardless. <laughs> oh, I guess I have been taking notes. Have you accepted the glory of the balls? Have you decided to become a follower of mine? Nothing quite that exciting, 6059. Don't overthink it. Anyway, I think we're done for today. There are a few things I need to look into. See you soon, okay? Wait. Dr. Rosemary exits the pit and leaves 6059's chamber. Come. I, I just heard come. Yes. <laughs> come back. <laughs> and log. <clears throat> Footage following this interview shows 6059 acting irritably. This en the entity is seen throwing balls against the mesh netting for several hours before it ceases and appears to stare towards the ceiling. After approximately one hour, it sinks back into the pit. And then finally, we have Interview 4, 11 one 2021 SCP-6059 requested an interview with Dr. Rosemary following the prior interview, to which Dr. Rosemary agreed. Begin long. Hey, thing in my pit, do you... Oh, model, it's you. Yeah, <laughs> what's up? You wanted to talk to me? Yeah, since we last spoke, I have been bothered greatly. All right, let it out, bud. I have always been content with my pit and my balls. The worshippers I had were few, but I was content. I was above them. I am the mighty god of the pit. And? And something is wrong. I, I feel wrong. 
Oh, you're being really serious about this. Okay, yes, go ahead. When I first awoke, it was just me and my pets. There was this feeling for something, though I do not know what. All I knew was that I was divine and the pit was mine. Eventually I met the children and they were kind to me, worshipped me, made me feel important. When I was brought here, the feeling began again. My worshippers were gone. It was just myself and the pits. This was upsetting, but I am unsure why. Then you come and begin speaking with me and the feeling would go away. But you would leave and the feeling would return. Why is that? Well, honestly, part of it's because I'm assigned to you. I need to take care of you and ensure that you're okay. You did not have to bring an offering with you this time, though. No. Ah! Oh, sorry! <clears throat> Dr. Rosemary takes out the family-sized Chuck E. Cheese pizza he had been concealing. He smirks. Sorry, I was so enraptured by the dialogue. You noticed, huh? You were not required to come this time, either. To be honest with you, 6059, I didn't come because I have to. I come because I want to learn about you, sure, but mostly because I think you just need a friend. What is a friend? Is it balls? <laughs> friend is someone you care about, not because they worship you or anything, but because you respect them and enjoy their company. You give them things because you feel like it, because it's the right thing to do. They listen to you and care about you, not because they have to, but because they can. I do not understand. Honestly, 6059, I could tell talking to you, you've been through something. I don't know what that thing is, but you don't need to be alone. Are you my friend, Doctor? Yeah, I am. If that's something you would like. 6059 throws a ball at Dr. Rosemary, striking him between the eyes. Yes, I would. And log. And then we have a cute little drawing by the SCP and Rosemary drawn during an enrichment activity, which I would love at Anomalous if you would so kindly put on the screen. We are friends. <laughs> we are teens, okay? <laughs> we are teens. Problem? We are friends. Problem? That's cute. I really enjoyed this. <laughs> I like the multicolored eyes, too. What is this picture you just <laughs> You mentioned the Dashcom ball pit earlier, so I must share my lovely artwork of 6059 in the Dashcom ball pit. <laughs> That's cute. Fantastic. I, I love the abstracted like drawing version of him is way be better than the image that I conjured in my head based on the fucking description and the description. He's, cute. He's like a cute little sock puppet. Yeah, no, there was definitely, um, like, sock puppet vibes here, although I will say, like, the second interview where he's talked about erupting from the balls and grabbing the pizza from Rosemary's hand, it's definitely, like, imagine Jaws leaping up and grabbing before <laughs> sinking directly back down. <laughs> Look at him. That's fun. Uh, do you, any thoughts? Or, oh, right, real quick rating. Uh, I'm going to give this one a solid 9 out of 10. I liked it. Um, I would have I wanted... Like that. Well, I give it 10. Nice. The only thing I wanted, and honestly, I would argue it's better that you didn't put in, because it would take away from, like, the main themes of the articles. I would have liked a little bit more, um, like, into its origin, aside from it just woke up in there. But I think, so, in terms of the article, you were right to not add that. But that's just what I wanted. My first draft had that. Mm -hmm. I my first draft actually 100% had that there was a whole log that explained exactly how he got into the pit and my critters all said no cut it out no get rid of that no bad and I'm kind of glad that I did because some of the stuff that I've done later on in my works it works better that I kept it vague for him I 100% agree I think it's always better to cut down when you can and I think especially that would have disrupted the flow because there are a lot of articles where we really enjoy it, and then all of a sudden the author can't hold back that uh, temptation, and they just start going off about, like, they backstory dump their SCP, um, rather than just, like, leaving little hints. And then it kind of, like, ruins the flow and, like, takes away from it a bit. So I think it's better that you actually took it out. But me, personally, I would have liked to see just, like, a hint or two about it. But otherwise, I think, like, objectively, you did the right route here with how you ended up posting it um, for the final draft. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad with the decisions that I made on this one overall. Um, you can kind of, it's it's funny that you offer this one as the one to read right after 6033, not only because this one is right after 6033 in rating for me, but also because 
in some ways it's kind of the sequel it's very similar vibes it's got the kitty drawing in it again i'm sitting mm. there and it's in my author post i'm like this is the one that cements me as having a style all of my good stuff is going to have the drawing of a child in it somewhere and i would love to joke that my best article on the site 7999 doesn't have that but it very much still has the kitty drawing in it. So clearly for me to get upvotes, I need to include a child's crayon drawing in there somewhere. Yeah, you definitely not like put yourself into a firm role, I would say, at least based on these two that we've read. Um, I would like to ask you now, before we jump into the comment readings, if there's any other remarks you'd like to make or things you'd like to plug specifically before we get into the last little bit of our episode here. Sure. So right now, the site is in the middle of what we call Goblin Con. I don't know how many people listening or reading, or even if you guys are super aware of it, but um, I have entered Goblin Con with an entry into the deletions category 6183. Mine is titled Ever Marching Forward. It is a pseudo start sequel to SCP 7999. Um, so if anybody is interested in checking that out, it is a little bit of a longer read, but I would really appreciate any and all views of it. Absolutely. You heard it here first, folks. If you don't, uh, read Ori's, uh, Goblin Con entry, we will literally You'll be have in the to the you, you will be put in the pit. Those are your only two options. You will Maybe not be they like the pits. <laughs> Uh, but without further ado, I believe we've got a couple of comments to read. If you don't mind sticking around with us for just a wee bit longer, Ori. If you sure, have to go, sure. no worries. All right, sure, sure, I'm here. Perfect. Let me get this open. Okay. So if you... uh... War. Okay. So just for reference, if none of these make sense, uh, last episode we read the final part of Jude's Bizarre Adventure with Kinch. So these comments are probably going to have to do with that. <clears throat> but I believe there was one specifically for you. Uh, I think it's this one. Uh, JTKC writes, This may very well be the funniest guest episode since the Catholic Joker. Kinch bounces off of you guys so well. It's so good and so many weird facts about Jude's bizarre adventure. I also love how two minutes into the episode, Kinch started talking about tan subspecies of British accent. Like a zoo <laughs> animal. It's so fucking funny. I heard you guys have more guests coming on soon, so I can't wait for... No, that's comes... false information. That's not true. <laughs> but it is true. <laughs> who, comes, no. who comes on next? In no, no, it's time to wake up. <laughs> we haven't had a guest on this episode. And what are you talking about? Ori's right here. Orderlies, take him away. <laughs> Did no, you mean see, Orderlies? We talk about the entomology of the British accent, but what we really need to talk about is whatever flavor of New York he used for 6059. It's his <laughs> what on earth? It's his favorite. He loves it. Every accent evolves into that. <laughs> I mean, it worked. It was great. It's now officially my, I guess it's not a head canon if you wrote it, it's just canon. So, canon. Hell yeah. There's nothing better than becoming like a creator's like canon voice for something like the, oh, the yes. joy in my heart I felt when I my Skipper voice became the canon voice for Skipper. I'll never get over it. <laughs> uh, uh, <clears throat> I can't wait uh, for who comes on next and what wacky stuff you're going to read. Parentheses. Hi, Ori. Uh, <laughs> he knows. Who the fuck who the uh, fuck leaked? <laughs> I, think, I think what happened is I told Ori on Twitter that we would have him on the podcast and then people saw that who follow me. <laughs> Yeah, because I told nobody until, like, I told two people today, and that was about it. Because so. some, some people brought it up in voice chat, and I was like, how the fuck do you know? And they're like, you tweeted it publicly. And I was like, oh, yeah. yeah. I keep saying secret. I hide my secrets, like a little goblin, like a little goblin con. We try, but uh, sometimes, uh, like, the guests just reveal it regardless. And, like, at this point, I think people know. I'm too bad at keeping secrets. People can get it out of me. Uh, JT says, giving this episode a genuine perfect 13 out of 10. I laugh like a lunatic listening to this while walking down the street. Have a good week, guys. Smile. Uh, an anomalous writer, our dear and beloved editor, says, Kinch guest episode. Wowza! Ah! Uh, Sobek says, nearly cried at the ending. So proud of Jude. It's kind of funny how well the Beatles song fits the character now that I think about it. Banker Paul says, Tan Ho Whoa, what's this? Tan Honey would um, definitely not ever release the episode a day early on Spotify. Tan? Well, I wouldn't. He's, he's right, I wouldn't. Tan? I, what do you mean? He, he just said I wouldn't. He, what are you talking he about? italicized it definitely. Yeah, it's yeah, emphasis it's on that. that he wouldn't do it. I don't know. I just get the feeling. I don't see the problem here. I see a problem. 
And the problem the is problem. that I think Taylor probably your fucking me. attitude. Oh, okay. Don't get <laughs> Leave me, me alone. <laughs> Leave me alone. It's not getting really defensive. <laughs> Comedy Man Kelp says, she be coming on my foundation till I am no longer of this country. Dig him up. He's not worthy of becoming the foundation of this country. <laughs> Organ Stream says, great episode. I love when you guys have guests. Kinch is very funny, lol. And then finally, Guare says, I love Kinch and Kinch's articles. I hope you have her for more episodes in the future. Um, so I know this had all to do about Kinch, but don't worry. The next guest we have on, we'll get to hear all the comments about how much people <laughs> loved you. Yeah, it's just going to be like Reading Club, where all of the posts in the Reading Club channel are about how I used a weird voice for something. Let's go. Hmm. Weird voices are better. Change my mind. Uh, all right, what's our time at? I think we are at a clean hour exact. So we'll go ahead and end it off there. But thank you guys, as always, for listening. And we will see you next time with another guest. Bye! Peace. Bye.